<laughs> thanks, Chrissy. Um, also, special thanks to Stu, uh, also to Doug, and congratulations, Doug, on your well-deserved award yesterday, and, and Prue, obviously. Um, take you through Musgrave. So we're focused in the Murchison region of WA. Uh, Forward-looking statements, please read that. The presentation's on the website, Musgrave website. So really, it's, the Q project is a big system. We're looking at 28 kilometres of shear zone that is controlled by Musgrave. We've got a new earn-in joint venture announced in the last month with Evolution. Um, really important that we see Evolution in the project and obviously they can see an opportunity there for, for a big discovery. Um, Evolution is spending $18 million uh, funding on the lake side of the exploration. We've got existing resources at Break of Day and Lena, two deposits we have 100% Musgrave on granted mining leases. We're getting high grades in those deposits, 11 metres at 54, a fantastic intercept there, and 11 at 30 at, at Lena also. So our existing resource base is about 440,000 ounces. The intent of the company is to grow that. We've got six third party mills, all within trucking distance of our resources. Um, in 2018, um, um, we started drilling on the lake in 2000, late 2018 and early 2019, we made a discovery of 52 metres at 3.8 grams at Lake Austin North. Um, now that's part of the Evolution joint venture where Evolution will, will continue the drill on, the, on that lake. Um, we're looking for another great finger. We're really a two million ounce ore body at around that 10, mark, 10 gram mark. So a company making stuff. 405 million shares on issue. We're roughly around $4 million cash in the bank, so we're well funded. Um, that doesn't include the Evolution funding, so Evolution will be funding the late component on top of that. And obviously no debt, market cap's around, around that $30 million mark. Um, and you can see our major shareholders in there. Westgold are still our major shareholder around the 16% mark. Evolution have also come in um, on our register at around the 4.6 mark, putting 1.5 million in um, through that joint venture. And they came in at 8 cents, which is roughly what we're trading at at the moment. You can also see uh, we also have Independence Group there on the register. So we have three corporates on the register, so a pretty good position to be in. As far as our location goes, we're really focused on that Q project area halfway between Mount Magnet and Mekathara in the Murchison Goldfield of WA. So the Murchison's really the second largest gold producing region in, in Australia behind the Yilgarn, or, or the Kalgoorlie region of the Yilgarn. Firstly, just touching on the Evolution joint venture. Um, again, Evolution is spending $18 million over a five year period to earn 75%. Um, and that's just on the, uh, the lake environment. So that's this middle section. Musgrave will retain 100% of our existing resource base down here in the green and also our new mainland project that we picked up a few months ago to the north there. Uh, we also have a joint venture with Cyprium looking at base metals in the northern part of our tenement area and we're controlling 100% of the gold rights for that, for that part of the tenure as well. Uh, one of the important no aspects to note of the joint venture is Evolution will spend four million in the first two years um, and we plan to hit the ground running pretty heavily with that with drilling starting um, just after Christmas in the new year. Um, Musgrave will manage that joint venture for the first initial two year period. So, Evolution will have a technical input and Musgrave will manage. Um, they have about 14 kilometres of the shear zone to explore under sedimentary cover of that Salt Lake environment. Um, it's really good getting the expertise from Evolution to come in with us. Uh, they have a, a strong history of, of, of capital um, of growth. They're the third largest gold producer in Australia um, and have a strong technical focus. So it'll be great to have that team working with us on, on that lake work. And I mentioned uh, that also they put in $1.5 million into our kitty to help us uh, explore our own ground. We retain 100% of our existing resources, as I mentioned, um, and also about 11 kilometres of their shear zone. So it'll split between the, between the companies. Location-wise, we're on a second-order splay. So we love these second-order splays off the main cutting worry shear zone that runs up between Mount Magnet. It's about 6 million ounces at Mount Magnet. Straight through up to the north, you've got Big Bell Mine here, operated by West Gold. And you've got the Great Fingal Mine, also owned by West Gold, on this splay. We're on this one. Hasn't had a lot of exploration, um, but we're seeing 
some good results coming through. We've made the break of day discovery, we've had uh, some success at Lake Austin North, um, and we've been able to grow the Lena resource. Uh, we've got a lot more work to do. We'll be out drilling again starting in about two weeks. Uh, also of note on this slide is you can see the Tuckabiana mill here. It's about 40 kilometres from where we are with our break of day and Lena resources. So about 40 cases of crow flies. These are 20 kilometre circles. So about 40 k's through here to the mill. Again, similarly to the Romelius mill to the south, about 40 kilometres away here as well. And noting, obviously, as I've said before, that West Gold are our largest shareholder. Now, the resources that exist at break of day in Lena. So it's important to note that they're quite close together. They're about 130 metres apart. Uh, Sub-vertical vein systems, high grade, you can see some of the grades from break of day, five at 50, uh, three around that 28 mark, three at 24, three at 23. Uh, and I've just highlighted these, they're also on the, on the section you can see here, multiple veins at break of day, and, and a system here at Lena that has only been drilled quite shallowly at the moment. And so we've got more work happening at Lena at, at depths down here to test the resource at Lena at depth. You can see the grade of the resource at break of day here, about a seven gram ore body. Uh, at the moment we've got 200,000 ounces there. It's open at depth, open along strike, uh, and we're looking forward to doing more drilling there. Uh, Lena is a lower grade resource, but open cuttable from surface. Uh, the majority of that's oxide and drilling underway at the moment below that. And we're seeing some higher grades at the moment with drilling below the Lena resource as well with intersects around that, that 15 to 30 gram mark. Just a plan view of Break of Day and Lena. So looking from an aerial photograph, this is Break of Day. In here, this yellow line is the resource boundary. This is Lena. There's about 130 metres between the two. Uh, we're just getting some, uh, recently announced some intersections to the south of Break of Day. We've had three metres at nearly 14 grams here, intersected only about 45 vertical metres below surface. So close to surface, um, and again, two at nine, again, close to surface. So that mineralisation is still open as we head south, and we were looking forward to following that up in the next couple of weeks. Um, to the north, about 100 metres north of the, uh, the resource here, we've also got an intercept at a metre at eight. Uh, again, quite shallow, roughly around that 50 metres depth, um, and not a lot of drilling uh, between this intercept and the existing resource. This is a, a long section. So this is Lena deposit. It's a long section down the, the strike of the mineralisation. You can see this is the base of the existing resource we have, 150 odd thousand ounces. It's only down to about 160 odd metres. So we're currently drilling below that. And you can see some of the intercepts there. Uh, there's six at 30, uh, six at 18, four at 14. And what we're seeing is that when we are higher in the profile in the oxide level, we're seeing a leaching of the gold. So, so effectively, you're getting your narrow intersections leached out and, and producing a lower grade over a broader interval. So for, for example, yeah, two metres of 10 in the fresh rock becomes 10 metres at two in the oxide. Um, that's why we think we can significantly increase the grade of the resource as we go at depth and looking at these fresh rock components in here. Um, these are the high grade plunge interpretation on the shoots. Uh, again, you, we think we have another one in here and another one in here as well that are yet to be drilled, tested at depth. So a lot more work to do at Lena, but we think we can significantly grow the resource. We're aiming to get a resource upgrade out on this in Q1 of 2020. Uh, and just as a, as a note as well, that high grade shoot component there is around 500 metres long uh, and all above five grams with the with the high grade, ex 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 exceptionally high grade components around that 20 gram metre mark in the, in the bright red. And we're in an area with really good infrastructure. Uh, we've got the Great Northern Highway running right up the middle of our project area. We've got six operating mills, all within trucking distance of our existing resources, um, all the way through to the, uh, the care and maintenance old Doré plant up to the north. Um, and around down to the south to Kirkalocka, um, held by Adaman. 
Um, and obviously closer, as I mentioned, you've got Romelius' plant here and Westgold's plant in here um, and the Gascoigne plant out here as well. They're all within that sort of 40 kilometre zone, uh, those three plants. And then as we get further out, still within trucking distances. We're seeing at the moment Romelius are trucking ore nearly 300 kilometres um, from Agnew across to Mount Magnet to put in the plant at a, at a six and a half gram ore body. That's the Vivian ore body. That'll run out in roughly around 18 months time. Um, and we're on the doorstep of Mount Magnet here um, where we are at Q. Look, going forward, there's really multiple low capex potential processing options uh, from profit sharing to toll treatment or sale. Uh, we're looking at resource growth, growth at leaner and break of day um, and also all the work we're doing with Evolution out on the lake. So uh, a lot of potential for new discoveries um, but all at mainland and Lake Austin but also resource growth with Lake break of day and leaner. Uh, and new Evolution JV obviously helps with funding going forward as well. Uh, recoveries have been really good. The recovery work we've been doing at Break of Day and Lena has showed we're getting 96-97% recoveries from CIL, so cyanide and leach, but also 70 to 80% recoveries at Break of Day on the inner gravity circuit component. So, so not a lot of deleterious elements, nothing negative in, in, in the processing, uh, and it looks attractive going forward, uh, which should mean low reagent use, um, which means good in, a, in an existing plant, in the district, or if we decide to build our own, then you've got that option as well. Um, at Mainland, which is this area to the north here, we've done a deal with some local prospectors who've had this ground for a long period of time. It's produced a lot of alluvial nuggets over the last hundred years. Mainland was actually one of the initial discoveries of gold in the gold fields back in 1894, uh, pre-Kalgoorlie. So, so an interesting area. Uh, lots of alluvial gold discovered, uh, not a lot of basement work done. Um, or we have done a deal with the prospectors, they retain the alluvial gold rights, we look at basement gold and, and we get 100% of the basement gold rights for a small royalty. Uh, we've done an initial drilling program, uh, we hit three metres at five at the last drill hole in the line up here at Consuls. And you would have noticed too that we put out uh, recently some recent rock chip samples through the area. Uh, and we had a rock chip sample uh, right down this area down here, no previous drilling. Um, and that, you can see it in, in here, this is that rock chip sample, a couple of specks of gold on the outside, pinged with the metal detector, decided to put the diamond saw on it and cut it open and, and you know, very coarse gold. You can see the scale in here, that's a centimetre. So these little nuggets are, a, you know, a three and four mil across. Um, that assayed are nearly three and a half thousand grams per tonne, so three and a half kilos per tonne. Um, an area that's never been drilled. So, and this is some of the things we're finding at mainland, because it's been held by prospectors for a long period of time, there's lots of opportunity here. Um, and these are just some of the nuggets that, that the local guys are, are picking up, uh, 28 ounces and, and 24 ounces. So we've got about four kilometres of strike. Um, of prospective rocks within this mainland area um, and again as I mentioned very little basement testing done. Um, on our, in our joint venture with Evolution, so we've had some success uh, with Lake Austin North. Um, what we think we've got here is, is a, um, the touching on a big system so but what we're going to need is a long-term funding strategy we knew that to fund exploration here and that is why we've got Evolution in. Um, that $18 million of funding will take us through the cycle. Um, it'll mean we'll be able to fund the exploration on the lake, which is a little bit more expensive than, than off the lake. Um, we're looking at about 50 metres of cover in places up, up to deeper than that in some places. So, so they'll undertake follow up on the existing mineralisation that we've identified, but also having a regional approach to exploration. Uh, and some of, the, uh, some of the numbers we hit late last year and early this year, you can see here some high grade components to the mineralisation. Uh, roughly starting at around that 70 to 100 metre depth. So there is some overburden over the top. Um, again, there's lots of, uh, lots of mineralisation identified over broad areas and a lot of follow-up needed. Uh, and again, a good idea to get um, some lot of technical expertise from evolution in, but also to help better understand the geology, but also um, that systematic approach to exploration where you can spend a lot of money uh, over a, a longer period of time.
So here, again, on the lake system, you can see this cover environment. So this is this sedimentary cover over the top, 50 to 60 metres of cover here at Lake Austin North. A nice regolith blanket we're seeing. So this is the dispersion in the regolith we're seeing and some of these intervals are, are sort of 90 metres at, at a couple of grams. Um, and then you're seeing the high grade core through the middle of that. And that's getting down here with some of those results. Again, you can see that. So you can see that uh, that 36 metres at three and a half and 20 at four in, in these sections here. And then just looking at uh, a section of about five kilometres or so of the lake, of the, of the total 14 kilometre section of, of, of Lake Austin there. We've got a, this is the Lake Austin North target. This is a, 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 a granodiorite intrusive, sediments out this side, greenstone belt on this side. Shear zones coming up from the discoveries at Break of Day and Lena, uh, uh, jogging around the edge of the granite, of this granitoid intrusion and you're getting mineralisation on this edge. Uh, not dissimilar to the Granny Smith model. Um, and then also we're seeing, this is uh, the regolith dispersion halos we're seeing. So you can see some complexity here and they're getting multiple zones, but also some cross-cutting features. So um, there's about eight kilometres of regolith dispersion just in this slide alone. Um, and so there's a lot of follow-up work to do. So um, one of the other positive things is obviously with evolution coming in, they have a big target size. So really that, a company of evolution size, third largest gold producer in Australia, want to find two to three million ounces. So it's a good um, acknowledgement to us that we're doing the right things, we're in the right environment, and there's the ability to find that sort of size deposit. Uh, going forward, we've got uh, soldier cam geophysics surveys happening um, over a larger area at, at Q. We've got diamond drilling assays we're waiting for for some deeper drilling at Lena to build that resource. We'll have an RC rig starting again for more extensional drilling at break of day, other targets at Lena, but also that new, uh, new targets at mainland as well. And that'll start in the next couple of weeks, uh, first week in November. Um, we've got another air core drilling program planned at mainland as well. And then the regional work on the Salt Lake from Evolution uh, in Q1 uh, 2020. In the background, we have continued to run some development work and development studies to look at the economics of what we currently have and what we need to find going forward to, to one, uh, for e the economics of processing in, in a competitor's plant in the region, but also what we need to find for ourselves to make a standalone type operation effective. So just in summary, uh, resources, grade, good recoveries, area with really strong infrastructure, we have exploration upside, and on top of that, we've got some funding support for longer term with, with Evolution. We've got total resources of 440,000 ounces and growing. Uh, we're consistently hitting high grades. Uh, we've got the new urn in JV with Evolution, as I mentioned. Um, indications of a big system. We've got drill assays pending at Lena, uh, new drilling to start also at those prospect areas. So we're well funded with roughly 4 million in the bank at the moment. Uh, so all the ingredients we need for, for really a stronger, long-term, profitable gold development. Uh, we're going in a really strong gold price environment in Australian dollar terms, and we're looking forward to that continuing. Uh, board and management, um, well known within the industry. Uh, many of people on this, and a lot of experience there, everyone with over 25 years experience from finance through uh, to geoscience and, and the markets. So thanks everyone. I've got the booth out the back, so um, please come and see me in the booth and happy to take questions out the booth. Thanks, Chrissy. Thanks, Rob. Thank you very much.